British aviators John Alcock and Arthur Brown made the first non-stop transatlantic flight in June 1919. They flew a modified First World War Vickers Vimy bomber from St. John's, Newfoundland, to Clifton, Connemara, County Galway, Ireland. The Secretary of State for Air, Winston Churchill, presented them with the Daily Mail Prize for the first crossing of the Atlantic Ocean by aeroplane in less than 72 consecutive hours. A small amount of mail was carried on the flight, making it the first transatlantic airmail flight. The two aviators were awarded the honor of Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire KBE a week later by King George V at Windsor Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Background John Alcock was born in 1892 in Baseford House on Seymour Grove, Furswood, Manchester, England. Known to his family and friends as Jack. He first became interested in flying at the age of 17 and gained his pilot's license in November 1912. Alcock was a regular competitor in aircraft competitions at Hendon in 1913-14. He became a military pilot during the First World War and was taken prisoner in Turkey after the engines on his Handley Page bomber failed over the Gulf of Zeros. After the war, Alcock wanted to continue his flying career and took up the challenge of attempting to be the first to fly directly across the Atlantic. Arthur Whitten Brown was born in Glasgow, Scotland in 1886 to American parents, and shortly afterwards the family moved to Manchester. Known to his family and friends as Teddy, he began his career in engineering before the outbreak of the First World War. Brown also became a prisoner of war, after being shot down over Germany. Once released and back in Britain, Brown continued to develop his aerial navigation skills. In April 1913 the London newspaper The Daily Mail offered a prize of £10,000 to The competition was suspended with the outbreak of war in 1914 but reopened after armistice was declared in 1918. During his imprisonment Alcock had resolved to fly the Atlantic one day, and after the war he approached the Vickers engineering and aviation firm at Weybridge, who had considered entering their Vickers Vimy IV twin-engine bomber in the competition but had not yet found a pilot. Alcock's enthusiasm impressed the Vickers team and he was appointed as their pilot. Work began on converting the Vimy for the long flight, replacing the bomb racks with extra petrol tanks. Shortly afterwards Brown, who was unemployed, approached Vickers seeking a post and his knowledge of long-distance navigation persuaded them to take him on as Alcock's navigator. Topic. Flight Several teams had entered the competition and when Alcock and Brown arrived in St. John's, Newfoundland, the Handley Page team were in the final stages of testing their aircraft for the flight, but their leader, Admiral Mark Kerr, was determined not to take off until the plane was in perfect condition. The Vickers team quickly assembled their plane and at around 1.45 p.m. on 14 June, whilst the Handley Page team were conducting yet another test, the Vickers plane took off from Leicester's field. Alcock and Brown flew the modified Vickers Vimy, powered by two Rolls-Royce Eagle 360 horsepower engines which were supported by an on-site Rolls-Royce team led by engineer Eric Platford. The pair brought Toy Cat mascots with them for the flight. Alcock had Lucky Jim, while Brown had Twinkle Toes. It was not an easy flight. The overloaded aircraft had difficulty taking off the rough field and only barely missed the tops of the trees. At 17.20 the wind-driven electrical generator failed, depriving them of radio contact, their intercom and heating. An exhaust pipe burst shortly afterwards, causing a frightening noise which made conversation impossible without the failed intercom. At 5 p.m. they had to fly through thick fog. This was serious because it prevented Brown from being able to navigate using his sextant. Blind flying in fog or cloud should only be undertaken with gyroscopic instruments, which they did not have, and Alcock twice lost control of the aircraft and nearly hit the sea after a spiral dive. Alcock also had to deal with a broken trim control that made the plane become very nose-heavy as fuel was consumed. At 12.15 a.m. Brown got a glimpse of the stars and could use his sextant, and found that they were on course. Their electric heating suits had failed, making them very cold in the open cockpit, then at 3 a.m. they flew into a large snowstorm. They were drenched by rain, their instruments iced up, and the plane was in danger of icing and becoming unflyable. The carburetors also iced up, it has been said that Brown had to climb out onto the wings to clear the engines, although he made no mention of that, they made landfall in County Galway, crash landing at 8.40 am on 15 June 1919, not far from their intended landing place, after less than 16 hours flying time. 
The aircraft was damaged upon arrival because of an attempt to land on what appeared from the air to be a suitable green field, but which turned out to be Derigimla Bog, near Clifton in County Galway in Ireland, but neither of the airmen was hurt. Brown said that if the weather had been good they could have pressed on to London. Their altitude varied between sea level and 12,000 feet 3, meters. They took off with 865 imperial gallons 3, L of fuel. They had spent around 14 and a half hours over the North Atlantic crossing the coast at 4.28 p.m., having flown 1,890 miles 3, in 15 hours 57 minutes at an average speed of 115 miles per hour 185 kilometers per hour, 100 knots. Their first interview was given to Tom Cork Kenny of the Connick Tribune. Alcock and Brown were treated as heroes on the completion of their flight. In addition to the Daily Mail award of £10,000, the crew received 2,000 guineas 2, from the Ardith Tobacco Company and £1,000 from Lawrence R. Phillips for being the first British subjects to fly the Atlantic Ocean. Both men were knighted a few days later by King George V. Alcock and Brown flew to Manchester on 17 July 1919, where they were given a civic reception by the Lord Mayor and Corporation, and awards to mark their achievement. Topic. Memorials Alcock was killed on 18 December 1919 when he crashed near Rouen whilst flying the new Vickers Viking amphibian to the Paris airshow. Brown died on 4 October 1948. Two memorials commemorating the flight are sited near the landing spot in County Galway, Ireland. The first is an isolated cairn 4 km south of Clifton on the site of Marconi's first transatlantic wireless station from which the aviators transmitted their success to London, and around 500 metres from the spot where they landed. In addition there is a sculpture of an aircraft's tail fin on Erislanen Hill 2 km north of their landing spot, dedicated on the 40th anniversary of their landing, 15 June 1959. Three monuments mark the flight's starting point in Newfoundland. One was erected by the Government of Canada in 1952 at the junction of La Marchon Road and Patrick Street in St. John's. A second monument is located on La Marchon Road, while the third was unveiled by Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador Joseph Smallwood on Black Marsh Road. A memorial statue was erected at London Heathrow Airport in 1954 to celebrate their flight. There is also a monument at Manchester Airport, less than eight miles from John Alcock's birthplace. Their aircraft, rebuilt by the Vickers Company, is located in the Science Museum in South Kensington, London. The Royal Mail issued a 5D, approximately 2.1p in modern UK currency, stamp commemorating the 50th anniversary of the flight on the 2nd of April 1969. Topic: <laughs> Memorabilia. On 19 March 2017 an edition of the Antiques Roadshow was broadcast in the UK in which the granddaughter of Alcock's cousin presented a handwritten note which was carried by Alcock on the flight. The note, which was valued at £1,000 to £1,200, read as follows. Topic Other crossings Two weeks before Alcock and Brown's flight, the first transatlantic flight had been made by the NC-4, a United States Navy flying boat, commanded by Lieutenant Commander Albert Cushing Reed, who flew from Naval Air Station Rockaway, New York to Plymouth with a crew of five, over 23 days, with six stops along the way. This flight was not eligible for the Daily Mail Prize since it took more than 72 consecutive hours and also because more than one aircraft was used in the attempt. A month after Alcock and Brown's achievement, British airship R-34 made the first double crossing of the Atlantic, carrying 31 people, one a stowaway, and a cat, 29 of this crew, plus two flight engineers and a different American observer, then flew back to Europe. On 2-3 July 2005, American adventurer Steve Fawcett and co-pilot Mark Reboltz recreated the flight in a replica of the Vickers Vimy aeroplane. They did not land in the bog near Clifton, but a few miles away on the Connemara Golf Course, a replica Vimy, NX-71MY, was built in Australia and the USA in 1994 for an American, Peter McMillan, who flew it from England to Australia with Australian Lang Kidby in 1994 to reenact the first England-Australia flight by Ross and Keith Smith with Vimy GEAOU in 1919. In 1999, Mark Reboltz and John Lanoe re-enacted the first flight from London to Cape Town with this same replica, and in late 2006 the aeroplane was donated to Brooklyn's Museum at Weybridge, Surrey. 
After making a special Alcock and Brown 90th anniversary return visit to Clifton in June 2009 flown by John Dodd and Clive Edwards, and some final public flying displays at the Goodwood Revival that September, the Vimy made its final flight on 15 November 2009 from Dunsfold Park to Brooklands crewed by John Dodd pilot, Clive Edwards and Peter McMillan. It is now on public display as the centerpiece of a new first to the fastest transatlantic flight exhibition in the museum's Vimy Pavilion but is maintained as a live aeroplane and occasionally performs engine ground running demonstrations outside. One of the propellers from the Vickers Vimy was given to Arthur Witten Brown and hung for many years on the wall of his office in Swansea before he presented it to the RAF College Cranwell. It is believed to have been displayed in the RAF Careers office in Holborn until 1990. It is believed to be in use today as a ceiling fan in Luigi Malone's restaurant in Cork, Ireland. The other propeller, serial number G1184, N6, was originally given to the Vickers Works manager at Brooklands, Percy Maxwell Muller, and displayed for many years suspended inside the Transatlantic Terminal, Terminal 3, at London's Heathrow Airport. In October 1990, it was donated by the BAA via its former chairman, Sir Peter Macefield, to Brooklands Museum, where it is now displayed as part of a full-size Vimy wall mural in the Vickers Building. A small amount of mail, 196 letters and a parcel, was carried on Alcock and Brown's flight, the first time mail was carried by air across the ocean. The government of the Dominion of Newfoundland overprinted stamps for this carriage with the inscription Transatlantic Air Post 1919. Upon landing in Paris after his own record-breaking flight in 1927, Charles Lindbergh told the crowd welcoming him that, Alcock and Brown showed me the way. Topic. RAF 60th Anniversary Crossing in 1979 To mark the original transatlantic crossing, on 1 June 1979 two Royal Air Force McDonnell Douglas Phantom FGR, twos, XV-424 of No. 56 Squadron and RAF Coningsby-based XV-486, were sprayed in special commemorative schemes. The scheme was designed by aviation artist Wilfred Hardy. As well as marking the anniversary of the crossing, the scheme also made reference to usage of Rolls-Royce engines in both aircraft, the Rolls-Royce Eagle in the Vimy and the Rolls-Royce Spey in the Phantom FGR.2, and on top of this it also marked the 30th anniversary of North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO. It was decided that XV-424 would make the flight and that XV-486 would serve as backup. On 19 June, XV-424 departed from RAF St. Athen to CFB Goose Bay from where the crossing would be made. The crew chosen for the crossing were, squadron leader AJN, Tony, Alcock, pilot and nephew of Sir John Alcock who made the original crossing, and flight lieutenant WN, Norman, Brown, navigator. For the journey the pair brought with them Brown's original cat toy mascot Twinkletoes. On 21 June, XV-424 took off from Goose Bay, Newfoundland and began the crossing to Ireland. Flying subsonically the entire time, the journey took 5 hours and 40 minutes, setting a new record. The Phantom was refueled five times throughout the crossing, with that being taken care of by Handley Page Victor K.2 tankers of No. 57 Squadron. XV-424 today is preserved at the RAF Museum in Hendon, sporting colors of No. 56 Fighter Squadron, while XV-486 was scrapped in 1993. Topic. See also Curtis NC-4 First Transatlantic Flight via Azores to Portugal Daily Mail Transatlantic Air Race, an event to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the flight Felix Do Fury, contender for the transatlantic crossing List of firsts in aviation R-34 Airship, first airship transatlantic crossing, also first east-west crossing Timeline of aviation